And a reaction that I got from some of them is they say, look, I would gladly read nuclear future, but I'm not gonna read fossil future, right? What would you say to change their minds? I mean, if that's their view, they really need to read fossil future. No, I'm taking that to you, not to them. That wouldn't change. It's a catch 22. Like, like, you know, look, you know, look, this person is not your typical critic, right? The person who says, I'd love to read nuclear future. I'm not going to read fossil future. This is not the main person that you argue against the book. So this is like, you've got, right. you got, I would love them person, to read it. But, you, but on the other hand, they're not going to open the book until you go and say some words that will get them interested. So, well, what do you say to this so person. So I don't know that I have the optimal answer, but here's one thing I say when, if people are clear, like I think it's important to know, I, it's hard to find a bigger advocate of nuclear than I am. And one of my, a big focus of my time is, is working with elected officials on what I call a nuclear decriminalization policy so that we can, we can reach the untapped potential of nuclear as soon as possible. So if people know, like this is a huge nuclear advocate in terms of fundamentals, he finds nuclear more exciting than fossil fuels and yet still He's focused on, he wrote, chose to write the moral case for fossil fuels. And then instead of doing a nuclear book, moral case for nuclear, he decided to basically just redo the whole thing way better and be fossil future. And, and the reason I just tell them sincerely is I am very excited about nuclear's potential, but I think that, you know, for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So for me, for my, my future kids, for everyone I care about, for people around the world, like by far the most important thing in energy that will impact their lives is what we do about fossil fuels. Because there is no real scenario at all in which we rapidly replace our needed fossil fuel with nuclear in the next few decades. And there, and I could give that argument, but um, nuclear is declining in much of the world. So I just think the fate of the world really depends on fossil fuels, and we are currently trying to eliminate them essentially in the next 27 years, and most of the leading thinkers have been advocating this in one way or another, so I just think there's an existential threat, but also an opportunity uh, involved in how we think about this issue. I just think that like it's it's great to be excited about future technology, but if you have the technology that makes your world possible, that needs to grow and people are trying to eliminate it, like that is the most existential thing. So that's why as the world's biggest nuclear advocate, I still focus most of my time persuading people to think differently about fossil fuels. And I hope they'll let me send them a signed book.